welcome to my channel as you know my name is rain and from my previous video we would have talked about the many struggles that i'm going through and the issues that i'm facing uh health wise so in this video we're gonna do a a brief run through of uh what we have talked about before and also to do a deep dive into the effects of parathyroidism well hyper parathyroidism on individual who has uh in stage renal disease so let's go all right so remember to like share subscribe of course i'll be making weekly videos giving you an insight into the health issues uh, and also to just take you along on my journey uh because it's not going to be all about uh health and sadness and all of that i'll let you know exactly how my life is and how living with this so i've been trying to do this video for a very long time <laughs> uh trying to get around the nerves and all of that to just really come and talk uh don't mind the noise uh i'm really close to the road so i'm using a microphone to kind of cancel out some other noise so uh anyways basically uh i want to talk to you about how everything really come together I'm gonna use a phone to really uh, read some stuff because I want you to understand from a medical perspective and also from my perspective as in how we understand it, all right? So, first thing first, I have end-stage renal disease, which is ASRD. That is when the kidney has little to no function. For me, it's no function. They are basically there, but they're not there right all right uh why well, i want to do this video first though and talk about hyperparathyroidism that's because persons may be wondering like why do i look like this and i wasn't i didn't really i wasn't born this way so uh i'm gonna show you some pictures of what i looked like before and what i look like now and then we'll get into it i'm going to just put the pictures here when i'm doing some editing but to give you a run through of what i have uh, basically i have end stage renal disease that's one again and i have heart disease which is pericarditis and also i have a cardiac tamponade uh so let's just go back right there because you're probably wondering what those are so first let us look up uh, pericarditis all right so basically pericarditis is an inflammation in the pericardium the sac or the membrane that surrounds the heart the pericardium holds the heart in place and helps it work properly there are a small amount of fluid between the inner and outer layers of the pericardium so my pericardium actually was hardened so that membrane that covers the heart it got thickened and was contracting on the heart it causes me to lose my heartbeat so my heart was there but it practically you couldn't hear it i couldn't feel it so what the doctor did was a pericardectomy and to get to the heart they had to do a sternectomy or a sternotomy where they cut through my ribs to get to the heart when they reach uh, the heart they strip it off and i can show you how i got like this scar cutting right down and then they actually place two drain tubes right here to release the fluid after the surgery has done those stayed in me like for uh three days to really drain the excess fluid after because I had to wash off the heart. So I 
I really want to know where to really get started because I'm not going to talk about the heart. The heart is for another time. All right, so basically that was a pericarditis from a heart disease. We talked about um, the end-stage renal disease. The next is extensive bone disease. Uh, bone disease is really from the, as I told you, hypoparathyroidism. And so instead of getting into the bone disease in its fullness, let us really talk about the parathyroidism, the hyperparathyroidism. All right, so hyper hyperparathyroidism is a condition in which one or more of your parathyroid glands become overactive and release or secrete too much parathyroid. The parathyroid hormone, hormone uh, this causes the level of calcium in your body to rise. And this condition is known as hypercalcemia. So basically, my parathyroid gland, it's actually a parathyroid um, a tumor based on the fact that it's overproducing. So it causes bone growth where there should not be. So for instance, my face right here and right here mainly you can see it's it looking really swollen if you can see from this direction my forehead as well because my skull actually has expanded as well so that's the reason why i kind of have a a more swollen look like my face is swollen and i all right so we're gonna get into that. Um, I recently did a test. Um, it's actually a facial X-ray because I'm having extreme growth in certain places that I shouldn't, as I mentioned. And I'm gonna read some of the. I'm doing a lot of reading, but <laughs> I'm gonna read some. Uh, so basically, the indication is end-stage renal disease with secondary. Um, RPGN, which is rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis, which really that's the cause of my kidney failure. Um, it was from a flu, as I mentioned. I caught flu, it was misdiagnosed, and my kidney fails within weeks. Also, hypertension because I have uh, severe high blood pressure that has been really controlled by medication. Again, I take a lot of pills. For practically everything to really uh, maintain my health <laughs> and also fibrinous pericarditis again so basically I'll show you this this is a x-ray if you could see and um, presenting with swelling of the right mandible and the gum no tenderness or pain the right is right here as you can see there's a swelling and that is caused by what they are calling fibrous uh dysplasia what is fibrous okay so where was i so i'm actually one of those medical bookcases that several person don't even know about really because I've been really quiet about my story for some time based on the fact that I'm not the type of person who, who put my health in front of me so I tend to try to be normal as possible so if you don't know that I'm sick or if you don't notice the changes in my appearance you wouldn't even know but since lately it has getting, uh, gotten really hard right but uh I was actually talking about the effects of hyperparathyroidism where the parathyroid gland is overproducing, uh, providing too much calcium to my bones. And the test that I actually did, it states that I have fibrous or fibrous uh, dysplasia. This is a chronic problem in which scarlet grows in the place where normal bone should be. 
it often results in one or more of the following bone deformities, brittle bone or pain, which I have all three bone deformities, which is the swelling that I'm telling you about, which is not really swelling, just too much growth. Brittle bone where I, my bone, if I move too hard, I'll break. And also pain, bending, stretching, moving, it pains just to do all those normal tasks, lifting every stuff, so I don't really do that. Alright, so unfortunately they're saying there's no cure for this. However, treatments may help to relieve pain and supportive measures such as physical therapy and to help strengthen the bone. And that's the reason why I take um, Tums or other form of calcium. I also take vitamin D as well, just to strengthen the bones. Uh, the deformity doesn't really, it cannot be reversed unless we're going to do corrective surgery or a full facial reconstruction, which is going to be very expensive. I'm actually due for a surgery soon, and that's what I want to talk about. Uh, I am supposed to do a hyperparathyroidectomy, which is a surgery. Basically, they're going to cut my throat right here, and they're going to remove the parathyroid gland, which is behind the thyroid gland. For some people they uh, remove a part of it because some person you don't need your part thyroid gland to produce the calcium but uh, for some they remove all of it and put you an artificial calcium not certain which one they're gonna do with me however uh, I tried to do this surgery several times the first time I actually went through all the process uh, got clearance from an anesthesiologist I got clearance from practically all the doctors at KPH to do the surgery. I was admitted and when it was time for surgery, my blood count was too low. And the worst part is my blood type is B negative. So that's like a very rare uh, blood type. So it's hard to really get blood to do anything at all. Uh, so with that, uh, the surgery was uh, postponed. I was sent back to renal unit, which is the nephrology unit at KPH to bring up my blood count. And then I got a follow-up date to do the surgery. The surgery is actually at the ENT. I am part of practically all the clinics at KPH, which is weird. Like some persons usually just a single clinic are. I'm a part of nephrology. ENT, physiotherapy, cardiology, all of them, based on the fact that every one of my organs is either on their way to failing or has failed. So, um, back to the surgery. I, the surgery was put off. So I went back to do the regular dialysis and all of that, bring up my blood cone, get in taking vitamin D, taking ferrosulfate, taking uh, anemic medicine, which is, I take Mercera, but other person take Eprex to really bring up my blood count. Uh, however, uh, I think my blood count was a bit higher and I was supposed to do the surgery, but then it was, cancelled again this time the surgery or the admission date to do the surgery to cut my throat was actually the same day of the surgery to do the pericardectomy which is a heart surgery it's actually impossible for me to do two major surgeries in in like a short period of time so I option to do the heart surgery first based on the fact that that was like emergency life or death because my heart was killing itself. It was contracting based on the fibrous tissue that had formed around the heart causing the pericardium to harden. So I chose to do the heart surgery. I did the heart surgery at UWE, University of West Indies, based on the fact that uh, KPH didn't have a cardiothoracic uh, unit. It's either UV or Andrews. Uh, 
I went to UA actually to do not a heart surgery. I didn't even know I needed an heart surgery or the severity of of uh, my my issue really. I went for them to do a simple pericardium top, which is to insert a tube, which is through a, a big needle through my chest to relieve the pressure of my heart by releasing the fluid from the pericardium to that tube. However, when I went there, the doctor at UWE told me that after doing a, 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 a echocardiogram told me that this is more severe than I thought because the pericardium has now hardened so that cannot be released through like a tube they have to go in and strip it off or go in and take it out but backstory on how all of that happened or, or even how I even reached to all of that I'm trying to be comfortable because <laughs> my bones hurt when I sit uh, so I prefer to lie down but okay uh, I was feeling terrible pain in my belly my abdomen and the pain was kind of no one know where it came from it was hurting so bad I couldn't walk I couldn't do anything I was rendered useless based on the fact that I was so I was always in pain I couldn't drive I couldn't do anything I would just feel this sharp pain whenever I stand I couldn't shower or anything. <laughs> Thankfully, I had someone to help me with that. And so the doctor at KPH told me that I should do a uh, ultrasound, which is a chest to abdomen ultrasound and also an x-ray to really see what's going on in there. Why am I feeling this pain that nobody can figure out what's causing it? So I did the x-ray and I did the ultrasound after doing the x-ray and the ultrasound they realized that there is some thing that they can't really put uh, a name to in my chest from the ultrasound which should have been a chest ultrasound but the radiologist actually went up too far and did like a full upper chest instead of lower so they saw that hey something is going on with the heart plus the heartbeat was so faint that they can't really hear it Anyways, after they did the uh, the x-ray and the ultrasound, I brought it back to the KPH and they, they still did not know what's going on as to why the pain is there and what's causing that. So they told me I needed to do an uh, echocardiogram, which I did after doing the echocardiogram that is when i was actually immediately admitted to the kph ward and then immediately sent to ue for admission to do the pericardium top which i i went in but i'll get in further details so uh i was sent there based on the fact that i was still feeling the pain and my oxygen levels was getting really low so i had to be put on oxygen based on the fact that i couldn't breathe i was having short of breath so after the doctor there again so we're back at you as to how i reached at you it was all a mistake really because i went to the doctor for a belly pain and now we're up to my heart see so uh when i went to UA the first night there uh, they stated that I was going to do a quick um, pericardium top and I was going to stay there like two days or they're going to send me back to KPH with a tube and then after it releases, I'm going to be sent home. That wasn't the case. I was admitted to UA for a full heart surgery, full bypass heart surgery because uh, they had to go in and take out the or take off the pericardium based on the severity or the advanced stage of fibrous tissue that hardened around the heart. So I went, I was admitted, and I was there in pain, doing all these surgeries, doing all these CT scans, which is so painful. And um, it reached a point where it was time for surgery, but 
surgery for me is not like a normal person based on the fire everything has to be right my blood count my potassium level my everything has to be right especially my blood count because I, I have actually i have renal uh anemia which means that my blood count is usually around eight or usually it's around six rather but it has never passed eight the normal uh, blood count for a human is like 14 pints my pint is like six pints of blood so i am always like anemic and it's also a good thing to have low blood count in my situation because i do have like a arteriovenous fistula which i use for dialysis and too much blood in my body may cause clotting and to, if this actually clots it'll cause more problems for me because i will i won't have an access to do dialysis and dialysis really keeps me alive i live off a machine so i first got a a uh subclavian subclavian uh a fistula well catheter which was based on my neck for dialysis which is a temporary catheter if this was to fail which is the uh fistula then that would actually mean another surgery to get an access where would i put an access they may have to go into my leg which i would never want anyone to do or anyone to even feel such pain so basically everything has to be right for a surgery um i the actually option for me to do a a local um, anesthetic surgery for when I was doing a knee surgery to repair my patella tendon because one time I was simply walking home a guy tried to rob me I ran I fell I ripped my tendon from my bone so they had to repair that and they started the surgery with local anesthetic as a switch to general based on the fact that I was feeling too much pain mid-surgery but well, that's a different story and I'll tell you about that in, a, in another video. Um, back to, where was I? Oh yeah. So that's why I ended up doing a full heart surgery based on the fact that uh, my heart was contracting and I was feeling so much pain. I was in the hospital for like over two months because I went there late November. I was in there the entire December. My birthday, December 5. So I spent my birthday in the hospital, of course, uh, awaiting surgery based on the fact that they couldn't get uh, enough blood. I got some donors and uh, they finally got enough blood because what they had to do was to really my blood count was really low so if they cut me open while on bypass they had to continue to fill my body with blood because i was bleeding out based on the fact that they had cut me open but thankfully that was a successful surgery and the main thing is that my fistula which is again the thing in my arm it's not really a thing or nothing is really in my arm the swelling is from being sticked the same place several times it's really them tying a vein and an artery to make an up to an abnormal vein strong enough to really pump all the blood out of the body because the machine has like a pump that pulls the blood they will filter the blood then return it to your body which is a four hour treatment that i have to do twice per week i do it on mon on wednesdays and saturdays every week for over seven years uh, what is that like uh it's very hard you have to really uh do everything around it so it's dialysis then everything else it's not you don't make any other plans that day and as you know uh i actually work i have been working <laughs> well i've been working since i've been sick so i've been working longer than i've been sick based on the fact that i i don't really remember a time of my life where I sit down not doing anything. I went from high school to sixth form to a uh, Stony Hill Heart Academy where I did computer repairs and system administration. 
and like a week after leaving that i got a job at a department store in maybe in clarendon where i was living at that time and uh from that i spent a few months there based on the fact that i wanted more for myself uh, a department store is a great job i really love the job it wasn't compensating me as greatly as i wanted or or how i really see myself so i left there and i started with my current uh job that i have now which is a permanent uh call center in portmore where i live now and i've been there for over uh, november this year november the 16th is going to be five years so basically with my illness i have to go to the hospital twice per week every week i have maintained that job and i have done pretty well with that job uh no issues per se with uh, attendance or anything only if i have to do a major surgery which is going to be a medical loa so it's not like i am supposed to be there i'm not based on the fact that i'm on leave and uh, i want to get into more details on other stuff really but basically the per pericardectomy surgery is gonna be done soon uh the thing is i am really afraid of doing it at kph based on the fact that uh i have several other issues that they have not really dealt with based on the fact that my cardiothoracic uh, unit is at UWE, but that surgery is going to be way too expensive for me to even do at UWE. Keep it now is doing elective surgery or is not doing elective surgery basically. They are dealing with the health issues with and all that. So I. Uh, I will try to get the surgery done based on the fact that I want to really stop the growth and then I will try to remove any growth that has already uh, occurred just to get back uh, a normal look really but it's I don't really mind being or uh, looking weird or anything based on the fact that I know exactly what's going on and you can only do so much really but for this video i'm gonna end right here based on the fact that i'm going on too much <laughs> i really want to go into uh details really on selective things instead of a general overview of everything so you can really get a more better understanding of what exactly is happening but I'll be doing videos every week and uh, so coming next week we're gonna do another uh, deep dive into another issue really. So this week we have done hypothyroidism, we have generalized every other issues and I think we'll go into a pleural effusion next week because there is actually a lung um, fluid filling up the space of my lungs causing uh, issues with breathing and the main problem before we even go that i have to tell you about is the fact that i am in constant pain because of scar tissues my heart being exposed and my lungs being expanded so when i breathe simple inhalation it causes pain because an expanded lungs touching an exposed heart <laughs> imagine that but I'll end here as I mentioned and I want you guys to like, share, subscribe, of course, please subscribe <laughs> and share the video. See you next week on another fun, really, is it fun? Well, another informative uh, video. Stay safe, protect your health at all costs. I am the above. God bless. Love. I am the above. Peace. Bless, love. Yes. Peace. Respect.